Hi, I'm Steve from Yokogawa Support. Welcome to another ExaQuantum training video. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the features of ExaQuantum Web Friends. I've got the browser open here on the home page or dashboard and you can see there is a menu bar and direct links to trends, mimics, reports and also the manual over here. So we can get to the trend list by choosing from the menu here or we can just click the button that takes us to the trend list. And you can see that at present there are no trends been created. So we want to create a new trend. We click the button and in the tag search dialog we can enter the name of a tag or a function block and then press enter to search. So when I press enter I see then down here a list of tags that match my search criteria and I can click on a tag to add it to the list of things that will be added to the trend. If I click on something and I find that I don't want to add that, I can click the little X and that will remove it. So now we've selected a few items, we can click Add to Trend. And you can see that those items now appear on our web trend. And if we hover the cursor over the web trend, it will show us what the value of those items are at that particular instant in time and also what the qualities are. I can click on the trend and then that information will also appear in the legend below. The legend has some tools that let us edit the pens. It also shows us how the range for the trend has been set. By default it's automatic. And we can add and remove pens from the legend. If I want to hide a pen temporarily, I can click on it, on its name, and it will then just disappear from the trend. Click on it again and it reappears. Sometimes if you have a number of pens on one trend, the axes information can actually take up a lot of screen real estate. So you can switch that on and off as well from the legend. If I want to edit the appearance of a pen, I have an option edit pen so I can change things such as the color, the label for the axes and also I can take off the automatic scaling and add my own scaling. So for this pen I'll say I want it to go from 48 to 52 and now you can see it's actually appearing in the middle of the trend it's much more clear. Once I have all the pens on the trend that I want and I've set up the appearance, I can save the trend and I can provide it with a name and a description to make it easy to come back to later on. I also have the option to add it to my favourites list and to make it available to other users. Finally, when I save it, I can save it with the current time that it's using so that when I review the trend, it'll start and open up looking at the data from the time it's looking at now. I'll leave those for now and just click OK. And now you can see that the, the trend now has its name and its description showing. And if I go to the trends list, I can then see it so it's available to view. Once I have my trend visible, I can choose the time period that I want to show on the trend in a number of ways. I can select live to select a live updating trend of the last hour of data. I can move the endpoint of the trend to now 
clicking the now button and I can use these recorder buttons to move back and forth to pan through the data by either a half time interval or a full time interval. So if I'm viewing an hour of data then clicking this button will move me back 30 minutes, clicking that button will move back a whole hour. I can also change the amount of data I'm viewing so if I want to see 8 hours of data I can click and see a much bigger period. Obviously that's actually quite difficult to see. And I can use these time selectors to actually choose a, either an absolute period, an absolute start and end date, or a relative period. So I can choose say now minus one hour, end time of now, and I can navigate that way. So there are a number of options to navigate through the data. If I want to save the data for further analysis in a product like Excel, I can actually export it. I can click on this link and it will then give me a standard download option here so I can save the file. Just resave that with the changes I've made. I also have the option to see alarm and event data underneath the trend. So if I click view alarm and events, it will now load in all the alarms. And you can see that anywhere where there's a point, uh, blue circle in this case, or whatever color pen is circle appearing, it means an alarm occurred at that point. And I can scroll through the alarms data and set the number of items I want to see. So that's a basic introduction to the web trend. Managing all the trends is carried out from the trend list. So from here I can select all the trends on the list or I can select individual trends. Um, I can delete them so I can delete items. I can add them to my favorites which mean then I can just view it a subset of my list of trends and I can share them with other users which is useful if I build up a set of standard trends that maybe all the users want to use. So that's about it for the introduction to the web UI trend.